Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Mahama and the Mahdi. Today, let's discuss interpreting the apocalypse, interpreting eschatology. So recently, I made a video about Ad-Duhan, about the smoke of Islamic eschatology, and discussed a number of ways that we could interpret the smoke as well as ways that it's currently being interpreted by many within the Islamic eschatology community. Um, today is a mild spray day. It's not the heaviest, but there are strange patterns in the skies. These are not natural cloud formations. Um, a few minutes ago, you could see the, the effect of frequencies within the sky and uh, the, the strange patterns. Um, now it's starting to disperse a bit. So um, in the video, we discussed how within the Islamic eschatology community, there is a tendency to interpret the smoke of eschatology um, as being related perhaps to nuclear war, to atomic weapons, to um, mushroom clouds, so to speak. And then I was proposing that uh, I was discussing how I'm a bit skeptical of such an interpretation for a number of reasons. And then I propose that it might actually be more accurate to conceptualize of the smoke as related to weather modification, to geoengineering, to various types of chemical trails, and, um, and then factory dispersants. And so it could be a number of things and that there could be there is the real smoke and then there could actually be a manufactured smoke in order to fit a prophetic narrative in order to basically as a psyop as a psychological operation in order to manipulate various communities into certain frameworks that will push forward an agenda that one or more groups might have an interest in seeing fulfilled so um Today, I just wanted to briefly discuss interpretive frameworks and suggest that it is highly problematic um, when we look at interpretation of prophetic materials to have a, an overly rigid, overly literalistic um, structure of interpretation. That when it comes to things related to eschatology, which is related to all things related to the end times, um, we need to consider a number of things. One is that for us, creation is ongoing. It is, it, it is constantly, like our bodies are constantly in a state of generation, of stabilization or maintaining, and then of decay and disintegration. And this is happening continuously. This is a very interesting phenomena. You do not have the same lungs. Every few years, your lungs regenerate. Every few years, your bones regenerate. You do not have the physical body that you had as, a, as an embryo, as an infant. You are not the same body nor the same mind as you were at 16 years old and as you will be at 76 years old, depending on various variables. Um, so we need to consider that life is in constant flux. We're constantly changing. And um, now there is continuity. I'm not saying there isn't continuity, but there's constant change. And in some way, it is always the end times. All across history, someone who is facing death, they're just on the other side of judgment. Judgment is snap of a fingers and we're at judgment. It just, there. we do not... We do not have any guarantees except that we will die and we will face judgment. We will have to have an account for that which we spoke, that which we did. And this is, this is the belief within the monotheistic traditions, but it's actually widely applicable. There are concepts of heavens and hells all across the world and of cause and effect. So what I wanted to suggest is that it's always the end of things in some sense. And um, there are certain signs that we can see that we are in um, the end times in a more traditional way of viewing things. Um, you know, the, the major signs, the minor signs, 
um, from a like in the Christian realm, the events of uh, the apocalypse, the book of Daniel, the book of Ezekiel, um, the book of Revelation, the sayings of Isa alayhi salam, um, in the book of Matthew and other other synoptic gospels, um, where where a number of different prophets. Um, speak about you know peace be upon all the prophets who spoke about the things related to the end you know our Nebi peace be upon him he spoke a lot about the events to come and in the minor signs and the major signs and people have uh, people I've noticed that many people have very very tightly structured they have attachments to tightly structured um, readings of all things related to the end and do not necessarily have the adaptability and the flexibility that enable a maximum number of people to survive and thrive in difficult days whenever we have an overly rigid interpretive network what it one of the things it does is it entraps people in a worldview and in a belief system that isn't necessarily the accurate one and if we stay open and flexible fluid and flow then and, and uh, interpret things as they arise with a toolkit that enables us to interpret things as accurately as possible, then we are in a better position to survive and thrive. To have, a, to, to have a closed interpretive network too early is theft of the highest order. It's actually stealing from current and future generations, from their ability to think critically and assess problems as they arise because people are stuck thinking this is the way it happens it has to happen in this exact sequence and they're attached to it and they miss details key details and then if we're in a time like we are now where people are eating garbage foods and shutting down their their uh, digestion and blocking their their uh, intestinal tract with poisonous toxic foods and substances poisoning their skin with toxic makeups with toxic body products. They're breathing in chemicals from toxic cleaning products. Um, they're taking poisonous toxic medicines through the mouth, through the nose, through the eyes, through the ears, through the skin, through the veins. Then what happens is their intuitive apparatus is damaged. And when we have a damaged intuitive apparatus, we can't properly read reality. And then if we are taking in toxic ways of seeing reality through uh, weaponized media, through weaponized education, through weaponized religion, that is to prevent us from reaching our potential, from actualizing our potential as complete spiritually mature humans, as perfected humans. If we have a, a wrong view of reality and we're reading, misreading things through our senses, through our damaged intellects, through a damaged intuitive apparatus, then we are going to be put into dangerous situations where we can be misled more easily. So notice that's exactly why um, wolves in sheep's, sheep's clothing, why devils, why compromised and corrupt individuals, why Shayateen would attempt to get us off track and give us a false reading of the world. Because if we have a false reading of the world, we are more easily misled and sabotaged and we can begin to sabotage ourselves and then not reach our potentials. So they can eliminate a threat without having to lift a finger, just through whisperings. And they can convince very smart humans to do very unwise things and to cultivate selfishness and get people off track. When we have an open, adaptable, flexible way of reading reality, then we are better able to um, adapt to challenges and to problem solve in the moment. I am not suggesting that we discard what has come before, the, the vast scholarship um, and, and intellectual efforts that people have made and preserved, because that's for future generations. So to close an interpretive network for the future automatically punishes and destabilize and maims and harms future generations. Just the same way that to burn and destroy libraries and heritage from the past steals from not only the past generations and 
is a, is a form of character assassination and murder of all of their efforts. But it also steals from present and current generations from interpreting and knowing our past. Because when you have a people ignorant of their past, it is much more easy for them to be destroyed and enslaved. This is the modus operandi of the Shayateen. They do not want us to know who we are. They do not want us to know what our potential is. They do not want us to actualize our potential because we are people of the prophets, peace be upon all of them. We are children of Adam alayhi salam. Every single line of your lineage has Adam in it, peace be upon him. If it has Adam, then it has every single human within that lineage contained within him per day of a last. That includes all of the prophets, peace be upon them. So that means that we are the, the race of the prophets. We are the species of humanity, of Adam. We are the Adamic species. And we have to preserve ourselves. So to prevent people from knowing who we are prevents us from knowing and actualizing our prophetic potential. We don't need any new prophets to come because we have the, the prophetic reality within us. And we have all of the answers within us and all around us per Quran. Read the signs on the horizons of the skies and within yourselves. All of the answers are within and all around. Allah has programmed this universe and programmed you with everything you need and we need to get out of this devil tech era. So we need to have open, expansive ways of seeing and reading reality. And this is not just about the end times, it's about anything because we do not want to steal from any generation. We do not want to steal someone's legacy and we do not want to steal somebody's future and especially when it's related to survival. Because these closed interpretive networks and this concept of blind following has gotten so many hundreds of millions of people, if not more, killed. So many people are, are in the process of sudden dying right now. This is related to the prophecies of our Nebi, peace be upon him. I'm saying that, that Interpreting this as being the, the Mahama, the great slaughter, the great call, the great kill off, and that it's a holistic total war for full spectrum dominance. It's a, it's a genocidal, ecocidal, extinction level event agenda. And whoever is downgraded and taken out of their prophetic DNA and has their DNA damaged and destroyed, then they are downgraded and the survivors of the fittest, the survival, those who survive the techno, high tech downgrades, because that's what they are, downgrades, they will be enslaved and enmeshed in a Dijalic slave system. And we need to be very wary of this and we need to have the best um, intuitive apparatuses and intellectual apparatuses in order to make it through this. That's why I'm saying we need to cultivate the best bodily and mental health and overall spiritual fitness. This is very essential. So just consider that we can't close off our interpretation and we cannot blind follow. Blind following always gets people killed. This is dangerous to blind follow. We need to be giving people the best tools, the best toolkits possible from here on. And whatever was made wrong in the past, we need to do our best to make it right and atone. This is, this is absolutely essential. So just consider this. If you doubt me, then, then give it some serious thought and seriously pray on it. Really spend a lot of time in sujood, thinking about, I mean, like, like offering this to your, to your Lord as, as, as a, uh, like giving it to your Lord and asking him to give you the answers, please. Think about this. We need to come out of this devil tech era. We need our problem solvers. We need our visionaries. So stay open, flexible, adaptable, and let go of every false attachment except to truth. Truth is our Lord. He is the master of the day of judgment. He is the Lord of all worlds. Only surrender to truth. Let go of all falsity. Till next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.